Hola! Welcome to today's afternoon Bible study and devotional. Today we'll be reading through Joshua chapter 21, the city of refuge. I invite you to grab your Bibles and read along with me. If you don't have a Bible, I'd love to hook you up with one or the Bible Gateway app or Bible, um, sorry, BibleGateway.com or the Bible app. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been reading through the book of Joshua. Um, and uh, yeah, we're at chapter 20. And kind of what's been going on so far is the book of Joshua takes place after the Israelites have wandered the desert for 40 years. They enter into the promised land. And there is a little bit of, we need to take over the promised land that's been going on. And as they're doing that, um, you know, uh, they, they kind of took over 31 different Kings. There's some people that are like, Hey, please let us stay and we'll be your servants. And they're like, Hey, cool. You can do that. But essentially all the tribes ended up getting their allotment of land. Uh, some got straight up assigned. Others were like, okay, well, let's work together and decide this and have that little bit of self-governance working together with the different tribes and also working together with God to kind of establish that. So there's been some kind of these cool moments of God leading and God also letting um, the people kind of start making those uh, smart decisions with him, but also, you know, with each other, which has been cool. Um, women ended up owning a bunch of the land as well, which I also thought was interesting and really cool, uh, especially for the time when this would have been happening. Um, you know, so there's some, some cool stuff going on. Um, and then the last bit of land that was given out was to the prophet Joshua. Um, and that is what we read yesterday, leading us to, um, what we're going to be reading about today, the cities of refuge. And this was something kind of really, uh, this was a cool part of the promised land, um, that has come up in a couple other, um, books as well. Uh, and I think it is, it's really interesting and kind of carves out, um, you know, fair trial understandings and forgiveness. And like, there's a lot of other things moved into here. I don't remember the last time I read this in Joshua. So I'm excited to kind of get in and there's a section here that's highlighted in blue. Um, so I, uh, once again, I invite you to read along with me as we read through Joshua chapter 20. Um, and yeah, uh, the Lord said to Joshua, now tell the Israelites to designate cities of refuge as I instructed Moses, anyone who kills another person accidentally and and unintentionally can run to one of these city, cities. They will be place they will be places of refuge from relatives seeking revenge for the person who was killed. Upon reaching one of these cities, the one who caused the death will appear before the elders at the city gate and present his case. They must allow him to enter the city and give him a place to live among among them. If the relatives of the victim come to avenge the killing, the leaders must not release the slayer to them, for he killed the other person unintentionally and without previous hostility. But if the slayer must stay in the city and be tried by the local uh, assembly, which will render a judgment, and he must continue to live in that city until the death of the high priest who was in office at the time of the in accident. After that, he is free to return to his own home in the town from which he fled. The following cities were designated as cities of refuge. Kadesh of Galilee in the hill country of Nephtali, Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, Kira, Kirath Arab, uh, that is Hebron, in the hill country of Judah, on the east side of the Jordan River, across from Jericho. The following cities were designated Bazar in the wilderness, plain of the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth in Gilead, in the territory of the tribe of Gad, and Gola in Bashan, in the land of the tribe of Manseah. 
These cities were set apart for all the Israelites, as well as the foreigners living among them. Anyone who accidentally killed another person could take refuge in one of these cities. In this way, they could escape being killed in revenge prior to standing trial before the local assembly. Uh, may God add a blessing to the reading of Joshua chapter 20. Before I get, uh, I, I share the things that kind of jumped out to me. I want to read the part highlighted in blue. So Joshua chapter 20, verse 9. These cities were set apart for all the Israelites as well as the foreigners living among them. Anyone who accidentally killed another person could take refuge in one of these cities. In this way, they could escape being killed in revenge prior to standing trial before the local assembly. So in this, for someone who sins and receives a punishment of the death penalty, the Lord makes provisions by setting aside these cities of refuge for all who have sinned and are deserving of death. Jesus has invited us to flee to him as an embodiment of our city of refuge. Uh, and that's a reference in Hebrews 6, 18. Um, so yeah, this idea, like, especially back then, like think about how easy it would have been to accidentally kill someone. Um, you know, they didn't have lights, right? Just doing stuff at night. You could accidentally kill someone cause you thought that you, they were robbing you or something like there's a lot of ways to do it, but I want to read, um, what it says in Hebrews 6, 18. So I, I'm just turning to that right now. Um, it's in the section called God's Promise of Hope. And verse 16, wait, was it 16 or 18? Verse 18 reads, So God gave birth to his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can take great confidence as we hold the hope that lies before us. So just that idea of God being a refuge, somewhere that we can flee to um, when we acknowledge our sin and our failure. The punishment of sin is death. These people are running because they've accidentally done something, maybe even po like intentionally done something, they run to these cities for protection. Sometimes we can get acknowledgement of our sins and the consequences are dire and we might have to face them, but we'll face them with God. But God is our city of refuge. He will take us in and he can work with us to find redemption, to find <coughs> Um, you know, hope and restoration. And that's what God is interested in. And that idea of forgiveness and restoration and hope and protection uh, and, you know, sound law and, you know, uh, innocent till proven guilty, all that type of stuff is rooted in, in these cities of refuge. And, I really especially like that it was for all the Israelites, no matter what tribe you were from, you could go to these cities, but also specifically that it was for foreigners as well. And that was, that is a huge, huge thing. Um, you know, imagine being a foreigner in a land, you're, you know, riding your horse, something happens and you kill the local like uh, especially back then like people would not be happy they'd want to see you know punishment for that but you could flee and find protection in these cities that idea of helping the less fortunate helping you know the whomsoever is so intertwined in god's plan for us and his desire for how we live on this earth. So may we have eyes to see the whomsoever's that God has put in front of us to help and to share of God's refuge, to be a safe haven from 
the fiery arrows of sin and shame and guilt because God wants to free us from that guilt. He wants to free us from that shame and enter us into a place of love where we can get out of ourselves and start giving and being that positive presence for others. Um, yeah, let us pray. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ. I thank you for, I thank you for being you, for, you know, establishing, you know, all these cities, laying the groundwork, and then as soon as everyone kind of knows what they're doing, it's like, cool, well, now we need these cities of refuge. <coughs> People will sin. People, accidents will happen. And I need to protect my people, but you also need to protect the foreigners being amongst them. Like, this is huge, Lord. Your heart for everybody, not just those that fit in, or not just those that, you know, belong to this group or that group, but for everybody. Your plan for redemption for everyone is laid out here. The plan for good governance, the plan for forgiveness, the plan for redemption, restoration. It's all, you know, highlighted here in how we live, how you wanted the Israelites to live their lives. And then you came down and you modeled the way for us. Lord, help us to follow, follow you. Help us to, to live out what you said and how you've laid it out. Help us to act justly. Help us to love mercy and help us to walk humbly with you, Lord. In Jesus' precious, amazing, awesome name. Amen. Awesome. Uh, thank you guys very much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.